All right, number four of the practice problems on the Praxis 5165 test. Uh, I kind of hate this problem. The idea is there's these three hypothetical students, A, B, and C, who are solving this equation, and they're all getting the right answer, x equals three. But what you're supposed to do is go through and check their work and see, did any of them get the right answer coincidentally? Ugh. All right, I guess really what we have to do is check these things line by line and make sure that their methods all make sense. So kind of understand what the student would be doing from line one to line two. Well, what's the big difference between line one and line two here? Maybe you recognize that there's these additional one-fourths on both sides of the equation. Everything else is the exact same. There's just these one-fourth. The student multiplied both sides of the equation by one-fourth. That's completely legitimate. So far, so good. However, in addition to these one-fourths showing up on line two, if you look really closely, you might notice some stuff gets canceled out. The student is also canceling out this four and the four in the denominator of this one-fourth. So really, there's two steps going on here. That's also completely legitimate. Although this idea of crossing stuff out is pretty elementary. And I wouldn't think that high school students would still be doing that, but I don't know. I never taught high school before. Anyways, line two looks good. What about line three? Well, this one-fourth and the four that were crossed out here are now gone. Good, they should be. 16 times one-fourth is four. Looks like we're just cleaning things up. Line three looks legitimate. From line three to line four, it appears that the student added 11 to both sides of the equation. That would leave us with the 5x on the left and 4 plus 11, in other words, 15 on the right. Looks good. Finally, dividing both sides of the equation by 5, we get an x on the left and 15 fifths, in other words, 3 on the right. Everything looks great. I'm convinced that A is perfect. What about B? Much like in A, in B, to go from the first line to the second line, the student kind of did two different things. First, we got rid of the parentheses here by taking the 4 and distributing through. So 4 times 5x gives me this 20x, and 4 times 11 gives me the 44. So I got 20x minus 44 equals 16. That's completely legitimate. But then the student took it a step further, and instead of writing 20x minus 44 equals 16, they divided each of those three terms by 20. That's also completely legitimate, although you could argue that if you're really trying to show your work, you might do that in a separate line. But whatever, it's fine. Each of the two things they did to get from line one to line two is legitimate mathematically. What about from line two to line three? First of all, I've never seen a student write things this way, but fine. On the left, we used to have 20x over 20 minus 44 over 20, and we still have 20x over 20 minus 44 over 20. On the right, we used to have 16 over 20, and we still have 16 over 20. However, going from line two to line three, the student appears to have inserted this 44 over 20 on both sides of the equation, added 44 over 20 to both sides. Perfectly legitimate, that's fine. Now we're just kind of cleaning stuff up. Negative 44 over 20 plus 44 over 20, that stuff all cancels out. So we're left with just 20x over 20 on the left side, but 20x over 20 is the same as just x. What about the right side? I got 16 of these 20s plus 44 of these 20s. The way you add fractions when you have a common denominator is by adding their numerators. 16 and 44 gives me 60, so I have 60 over 20 on the right. And then I'm going to reduce that fraction. Instead of 60 over 20, I'm going to call it 3, which is what the student called it, which is completely correct. The steps in method B are also just fine. Finally, method C. I guess the idea with method C is what the student tried to do is kind of divide both sides of the equation by four, kind of, sort of, but they divided the four on the outside of the parentheses by four, and they divided by the 5x minus 11, the stuff inside the parentheses, by four. So before you cross out these fours right here, maybe as an intermediate step, what the student is doing is changing this into four over four times 5x minus 11 over four, which you can write as 5x over four minus 11 over four, is equal to 16 over 4. That is wrong. This is all one term on the left side of the equation here. So when you're dividing both sides of the equation by 4, you don't divide the stuff outside the parentheses and the stuff inside the parentheses by 4. You can only do one or the other. If they had written 4 divided by 4 times 5x minus 11 equals 16 over 4, that's completely legit. If they had written 4, 5x minus 11 over 4, or divided each of these terms individually by 4, that's completely legit. You can divide the stuff outside the parentheses by 4 or the stuff inside the parentheses by 4, but you cannot divide both the stuff inside the parentheses and the stuff outside the parentheses by 4 unless you divide the right side of the equation by 16. Before the student went and canceled out these 4s, they made this mistake. They should have either gone here or gone here. They did not. They're incorrect. 
C is wrong. The correct answer is A and B to this problem. But wait, student C got the answer correct. Yeah, I bet they make another mistake somewhere in here. Let's see if we can find it. After they went to this line here, which again is incorrect, they then canceled out these two fours, which is totally fine. That left them with 5x over 4 minus 11 over 4, which you see written right here, is equal to 16 over 4, which you see written right here. They then added 11 fourths to both sides of the equation, completely legitimate. They then canceled out this negative 11 fourths and this positive 11 fourths. So on the left side, we're left with just 5x over 4, which is great. On the right side, instead of adding these two fractions together, they reduced this fraction, which is weird, but not incorrect. I think a more logical step would be to call this 27 over 4, as opposed to 4 plus 11 over 4. But they're the same thing, technically no mistakes. But here's where we make another mistake. Between this line and this line, the left side is unchanged. But look what happens on the right side. 4 plus 11 fourths is 15 fourths. No, it's not. You don't add a whole number and a fraction by adding the numerator of the fraction and the whole number. Right? If you struggle to see that, think about different numbers. 3 plus 1 half. That's 3 and a half. But if I added the 3 plus the 1, I'd get 4 halves. 4 halves is not the same as 3 and a half. 4 halves is 2. You can't add fractions this way. 4 plus 11 fourths is not the same as 15 fourths. What you would have to do is call this 4 over 1, and then call it 16 over 4, and then 16 over 4 plus 11 over 4 gives you 27 over 4, What you would have had up here if we didn't reduce the fraction in the first place. Anyways, there's another mistake going from this line to this line, and because the test makers wrote this very carefully, the two mistakes that they made, one going from here to here, and one going from here to here, canceled each other out. Everything else is fine. If we want to get this x by itself, we can do this multiply by the reciprocal trick. Multiply both sides of the equation by 4 fifths. This 4 and this 4 cancel. This 5 and this 5 cancel. I'm left with just an x. Then on the right side of the equation, this 4 and this 4 cancel. I have 15 over 5, aka 3. No mistakes from this line to this line. Oh, that sucked. Yeah, I told you I didn't like this. Is there any way that I, the person practicing for this test, could see that a little bit more easily? Well, I don't know. One thing you could do is we know the correct answer is 3. Right? We see that is the answer in all three cases. If a student is doing legitimate algebra, I should be able to change the x into 3 on every single line and get a true statement. Change all the x's into 3 here, and you'll get 16 on the left and 16 on the right. Change all the x's into 3's here, and you'll get 4 on the left and 4 on the right. Change all the x's into 3's here, you'll again get 4 on the left and 4 on the right. All the x's into 3's here, you'll get 15 on both sides. My point is, when I plug in the answer to each of these different lines, I get a true statement. Therefore, the lines must be correct. If I don't want to go through and try to read the mind of some student who went through this process, all I got to do is take the answer and plug them into each line individually. It's a little bit tedious, but it's one way you'll see that the algebra down here is incorrect. Right, try changing all the x's into 3's, I don't know, right here maybe? I get 4 over 4, which is just 1. 5 times 3 is 15, so I'd get 15 fourths minus 11 fourths times that 1, if you want, is equal to 16 over 4. Wait, is that true? Is it really equal to 16 over 4? No. 15 over 4 minus 11 over 4 is 4 over 4. 4 over 4 is 1. 1 is most certainly not equal to 4. When I plug in the correct answer, to this line, I get an incorrect statement. I get a correct statement on the first line, but an incorrect statement on the second line. What that means is the algebra that I did to get from the first line to the second line must have been incorrect. And these lines will continue to be incorrect until I make another mistake going down from this line to this line to cancel out my first mistake. I don't know if that's quicker, I don't know if it's easier, I don't know if that's helpful, but it's the only other thing that I can think of to solve this miserable problem.